Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC, everybody. I'm Ken, and today we are looking at the Three Flow Nine Torrent Servo, Torrent Servo Horn, and this little uh, Flow Gnome. He's cool. All right, everybody, before we dive into this, go ahead and give me a like and a subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you like the video at the end, you can always share it and make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss new videos that come out. 3Flow9 has a lot of awesome stuff and their new Torrent Servo just got back in stock. Their first run completely sold out super quick. And so uh, they had to wait a while for their next shipment to come in and now they're back in stock. So definitely check them out. This Servo is pretty awesome. Right now it's at $45.99, so pretty good on the price, and it is one of the few servos on the market that does this. The servo wire comes out the back, which, if you've got the new Red Cat Ascent, that's what you need. The servo wire on the Red Cat Ascent on the stock servo comes kind of right out the back. You have really narrow frame rails here. So having the servo wire come out the back will definitely help prevent from rubbing on the frame rails or hitting on the shocks because the shocks are also very close to those frame rails. So most of the other servos from other companies, they're going to have that wire come out the side and that wire coming out the side is definitely going to hit on things. So we love the three flow nine torrent servo because it really helps give you better clearance. And actually we've got it on this build here. This is our MB24. You can see our torrent servo set up right here. The wire coming out the back gives us plenty of clearance so it doesn't mess with hitting the chassis rails or the shocks under extreme articulation or for those real low trucks. And this truck is super low. So we definitely love that. They also make the Cascade, which is this little guy here, but it's no slouch on power. It is perfect for rear steer applications because it's a lighter servo for the rear. Uh, you kind of want to maintain a lighter rear end, right? So you want a lighter servo on the back and this guy will accomplish that. I don't know if you can see how much smaller it is, but it is a lot more low profile, a little, little less uh, wide, almost the same width, but it's a little less wide and definitely thinner, which means lower center of gravity, um, and less weight. Also, they have the Cascade rear servo mount, which we had to do a lot of custom work to these uh, MIAS isokinetic axles to get them to fit because the MIAS axles don't fit stock servo trays. So we had to modify our MIAS to fit stock servo trays and then we were able to throw this guy on there. Uh, this is for the SCX24, this mount. Be cool to see if they come out with other mounts for other axles, but right now they only have it for the SCX24. So if you're looking for SCX24 rear steer setup, this is the go-to. It's also got your adjustment for anti-squat. It's kind of hard to see in here. We'll throw a picture up though. It's got adjustment right over here for anti-squat, um, which will you know help you under acceleration and whatnot when you're trying to bump up and over those uh, those tough climbs. And also just help you with your link geometry if you're trying to set it up in a, a little bit different way. But super sick setup and again, no slouch on power. They also have an aluminum servo horn for this guy. But the servo horn for the torrent here is awesome. It's the strongest servo horn you can get realistically. It's a steel, stainless steel servo horn and it's, uh, it's drilled out for M2. So you can use the little bit bigger hardware. That way you're not breaking your screws off, um, you know, under when you get bound up or if you're trying to like pull yourself out of a rock. Your weak point is usually that screw right there when it breaks off inside your servo horn, that's no good. So now instead of 1.4, we get M2, which is awesome. And yeah, it just, it just looks good, right? It is quality. So we're gonna do this same setup, at least the front with the torrent and the torrent servo horn here on our Red Cat. Get it installed real quick, show you uh, kind of what we have to do to get it installed. It should be a direct swap over um, other than the screw the screw that comes on the stock uh red cat servo horn is a 2.5 you're gonna to have to change that over to an m2 screw for if you're going to use the servo horn or you can try to just use the stock servo horn it is a 25 tooth okay so that's pretty standard what most micro servos run let's go ahead and talk about this guy look at look at all these specs on the back here i'll give you a, a shot of this real quick you can pause but we'll run through it real quick at 8.4 volts we are at 7.5 kilograms and then uh, 0 
for 60 degrees. That's your speed, which is pretty quick. So you've got really good response. A lot of people like to use their servos to kind of wiggle them down rocks or, you know, just kind of control where they're sitting, uh, where their front end sits, where they're trying to hit certain lines. So you can, the, if you can kind of vibrate and shake your front end, it kind of helps bring you down a hill sometimes. A lot of times when you're de descending, you'll do that to kind of drop yourself down slowly versus actually giving a throttle. So having good operating speed is very important. Uh, it does go up to 8.4. You can run it all the way down to 4.8. There's your temperature, pulse frequency, size, all that good stuff. It is a cordless motor, which is super good. It weighs 21 grams, uses a standard, you know, JR connector, and then the 25 tooth spline. Also, it's got metal bearings and it's steel gears, steel and copper gears. So there are some servos out there that say they're titanium gears. One thing to be very aware of when they're talking about titanium gears is usually they're like titanium plated, which means they're still gonna chip. They still chip and break. Uh, so I think 3Flow9 opted to go with the steel gears just because it's a solid piece of material versus a plated piece. And uh, steel gears, I mean, you can't get much stronger, especially at this price point of you know $46. Okay, another cool thing about this guy is it's programmable. You can pick up a programmer card, programmer box, whatever, and uh, you can program all kinds of stuff, which is super cool. We didn't get one of those, but at some point maybe we'll run through and show you how to program one. Um, but the program card lets you do a bunch of fine tune settings. Uh, basically you can do your power output, so how much power it's putting out. So you could actually put a little bit less power if you wanted to, even if you're running on 8.4 volts, and that kind of will maybe extend the life of the servo a little bit. Also, it has um, how to center. You know, you can center from the programming versus your remote, uh, and that gets you a true center, a more true center. You also have soft startup, and soft startup is basically if you're servo is turned, right? You're sitting like this and you turn on your rig, it'll just snap forward, which puts a lot of wear and tear on your servo. And actually it's on big servos for like bigger scale RC cars. It's kind of important on some of those because if you're if you're holding your car, or you're working on it and you turn it on and your finger happens to be in there, they could literally crush or chop your finger off. They're so powerful, the big servos. So that soft start feature is in larger scale servos, but now we've got it in the small ones. And it's really more to just kind of reduce wear and tear whenever you turn on your rig it'll slowly recenter right instead of just snapping to center it'll slowly recenter uh to, to whatever your receiver and transmitter is set at and then you can also do uh, power shutoff parameters which i believe are basically when the servo is inactive for a certain amount of time say you're sitting there your truck's on the rocks you're talking to a buddy instead of your servo sitting and trying to keep itself either centered or at a certain degree if you're not putting any input in it shuts down and just kind of saves so you're not overheating and stuff like that. At least I believe that's what it's for. Anyway, a bunch of different parameters to uh, adjust the 3Flow9 torrent, which is awesome for one of these tiny little guys. And again, this thing is no slouch, plenty of power and fantastic price. But again, my favorite part is that it's a rear exit. Dev definitely dig that. Now we got this little flow gnome here and this guy came with our, uh, our servos, but this flow gnome, super important. This is uh, gonna give you some good flow juju and uh, you can throw them on your truck or throw them on your course. Look at his little sparkly hat, three flow nine sparkly hat. Definitely dig that. I think they've even got some glow flow gnomes so you can glow while you flow. Pretty sweet. Oh, does this guy glow? I don't think this guy glows. Hold on, let me look. No, no, ours doesn't glow. That's okay. He's cute. He's awesome. He's 40 millimeters tall guys. They also have a, uh, wait, is this the tall gnome or the short gnome? This is important stuff here, guys. I think we've got the short gnome. Nope, we got the tall gnome. So tall gnome is 40 millimeters and the short gnome, they've got a shorty guy. He's just 30. If you're looking for a shorty, you know, maybe your truck needs a shorty gnome. I think they have red, red capped ones as well. So you can get one with a red cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get this stuff installed. Got our flow gnome over here. Give us some good juju flow sticker we should throw this on this truck right now boom going with the flow bam all right all flowed out let's get it on the truck now first things first obviously got to pop off our drag link here by the way these guys are 828RC, also known as Tyler Chapman links. Same with our links here. He makes a ton of different colors. He makes brass bent links, aluminum bent links, and raw aluminum. So tons of options there, pretty sweet. We'll go ahead and get our servo out of here. We added some little wheel weights in there just as a cheap mod, basically, getting us some extra weight up front. 
It's an easy to do, super cheap way to get weight. It's weight on the axle versus the chassis, which is always good. You don't want weight on your chassis if you can avoid it. So getting weight on the servo and uh, axle, helpful. Only downside is it's it's a little high. It's not like super high, but it's it's higher than if the weight were like down here. You know, if you had like low blow knuckles, stuff like that. All right. So there's that guy. Hmm, I wonder how much this weighed with that weight. Let me check real quick. I'm curious. 27 and a half grams. How much is this going to weigh? Oh, basically 24 grams. So we're only losing three grams. And we can always add this weight to this servo and get even more. Here, let's do it real quick. Ugh. Pull this off. I don't know if I want to cover up the cool logo and stuff, though. I like to show off the three flow stuff. So if we were to throw this on here, so we were at 27 and a half. What are we at now? Boom, boom. Plus our screw. 37. So we gained, these are 10 grams, basically. Is that what that is? It's 10 grams heavier than this, essentially. Anyway, just thought I'd show you. So one thing we did have to do, which we may have to do here as well, is we had to trim down our ears so that they wouldn't hit on our chassis rails under full compression because we've kind of gotten our truck to go super low. And even our servo mount ears here are trimmed down. You can see they basically are going to hit under extreme compression. I mean, I have to push it all the way, but uh, you're going you're gonna to kind of bottom out there. So we'll see. We'll probably have to trim them down, but let's just test fit it real quick. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to trim off that top mount, essentially. So you can use a Dremel, you can use, we're gonna try some clippers here real quick. We'll just do it quick and easy. Just gonna trim this guy here. Trim this guy here. We're gonna leave this. I think it mounts, I didn't look. I think we're mounting through this hole, but worst case, if we mount here, we'll st we still have this edge. You don't want to cut that off because you need that little ledge there. Pew! Yeah, you definitely need to keep that top ledge. That top ledge is where the screw is going to hold you in there. Okay, see right there. So don't cut that all the way off, but that'll still be enough. That's plenty to brace it. Again, this is aluminum. It's plenty strong. Let's see here. Now we have better compression. Might still need to trim these down a little bit just to get it a little more flush, but should be golden. I'm going to use a Dremel. I'll just kind of take this in. Basically, just trying to make this nice and smooth here versus jaggedy from my cut job. All right. So just like so. Now you won't have to do this if you don't have your truck super lowered. Like we've tried to lower it as much as we can. We're trying to keep it pretty low center of gravity. So if your truck, you just have to test fit, right? When you fit it in there, if, you're, if you've got plenty of clearance, you don't have to worry about taking this down. If you need a little bit more clearance, take it down. Not a big deal. And there we go. Now we got full compression, not hitting on the servo. Beautiful. Okay. Now, because we dremeled this out, I want to kind of touch it up. We don't like the dremeled, you know, trimmed look here. So we're going to use our Pro Tools. Super Sharpie, baby. We're just going to super sharpie this guy back to black. Ta-da! Just like new. Okay. Sweet. Now, before we get this, actually, we can go ahead and do this. I was going to say before we install it, we should put our servo horn on and center it, but let's go ahead and just throw it in. All right. Now, you can slightly adjust your servo left and right just a little bit. If you notice here, we're kind of under articulation hitting right there just a little, but not on this side. So I can loosen these guys back up just a tad. 
and try to get my servo a little more centered. Again, any aftermarket servo is pretty much going to have this same fitment limitation, right? It's a little better. You go a little bit more. Another thing I want to point out is your servo, because it's a high torque servo, they're a little bit longer. They do kind of sit on your links over here. And if you're worried that your links are going to be, you know, having too much compression on them and whatnot, you can always take a little bit of material out of the back of the servo plate. There is a lot of room in there to kind of take that out and just kind of give your links a little bit less pressure on them. Um, you can also try to mount your servo up just a tad higher, change your servo mount. But again, mounting your servo higher raises your center of gravity, means you can't compress as far, all that stuff. So it's always a trade-off. There's always things you're trading off. And uh, it's just important to know that a lot of times if you're trying to get, you know, aftermarket upgrades, not everything fits exactly perfect, uh, especially when it comes to servos, because people don't want to make a servo specific to a truck because it's expensive to make servos and get them, you know, get the design of them and stuff. And so making one different for every truck is just not feasible. So they have to make it general, right? The servos are general dimensions and you have to make them fit. Okay, I think we're a little bit better there. And worst case, this portion of the chassis where this kind of is, is hitting right there, you can kind of see the more I rub on it, it just scrapes a little bit. You can also just take out a little bit of material right there and then you won't have any hitting at all. We can go over even a little more here. I think I'm moving it, but I guess I'm moving out as much as I, not moving it as much as I thought I am. So I'm just gonna slide it over some more, tighten it down, slide this guy over some more, tighten it down. There we go. There we go. Like it's like barely touching it at this point. And now this side touches just a little bit. At least it's equal. And like I said, that'll probably just wear away, honestly. Or we can get in there and we can really drum it. We can probably just do it with a damn exacto knife, I bet. Just take out a little bit of material off that chassis. Right there. Just a tiny bit. I don't know if you can see that, but. Oh yeah, no, it doesn't even hit. So it doesn't take much, guys. But this is what this hobby is about, customizing your rig, making it work for what you're trying to do. Not everything is just plug and play, guys. This hobby is built on customization. And it's part of what makes it fun and unique, right? Every truck, every build is yours. It's unique to you. You put blood, sweat, tears, and money into it. There we go. Yeah, buddy. All right, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and plug in our servo. We're going to make sure we're nice and centered. I think it goes that way. Let me get a battery. Got our battery in there. Got our transmitter. Turn her on. I wish there was a way to know when center was, like a beep, an audible beep. I'm going to set our trim. It's not even a double blink. Oh, there it is. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that was it. So when you have that double blink, that's when your transmitter's trim is centered. Let me turn this guy on. All right, so now we know our horn or our spline, our gear is centered. We can throw our servo horn on there. And actually we should go ahead and attach our servo horn to our drag link first. That way we can make sure we're fully centered because if your drag link has a different length, your servo horn might not be you know, totally vertical. It might be a little bit like that to get actual center, but we want to make sure our servo is centered, our transmitter is centered. Now let's go ahead and mount this on here. Now, as I said, you're going to need an M2 screw. There's screw kits you can get on Amazon. I recommend you have them anyway. Um, you're always needing screws. Make sure you get one that's just about the right size. Yeah, that'll be perfect. And we're gonna Loctite this into there. Now, this link here that came from, you know, the 828RC is running a 2.5 millimeter hole. These are actually TRX4M link ends, essentially. And so uh, we're gonna shim this guy down to make sure it's the right size for our screw and we don't have this slop and play in here, right? Because if you have a two millimeter screw and a 
2.5 millimeter hole, you get this slop back and forth. And yeah, you can tighten it down really tight against it, but if that screw backs out at all, or you know things just start to wear, you'll start to get play in there. So I'm gonna show you a little shim thing, which is actually what we used on all of our links here, because these are all, again, 2.5 ball joints going through two millimeter screws. All their hardware is two millimeter. So we shimmed them up, and I'm gonna show you that. So these little guys here are for fishing lures, making fishing line and fishing lures in their crimps. You can get them in a bunch of different sizes. We actually go deep into these in the video for these links, and we'll put that video right over here. You can check them out. We basically have to trim these guys in half because they're a little long, but we trim them in half. We use a Dremel to do it. You can't just cut them. They'll smash. But once you've trimmed them in half, they'll fit right into a ball joint perfectly. And they basically will take it and take it down from a 2.5 millimeter and get your inner diameter as a 2.0 millimeter. They are a tight, snug fit because they are perfect. They are perfectly 2.5 millimeter outer diameter. Here we go. Look at that. Ooh, buddy. But now it's sleeved up. You can take your two, two millimeter screw and bam, no play at all in that screw. But I'm not going to be able to show you no play. You just have to trust it, right? Like it's not moving. You can move this way, obviously, but it's not moving back and forth this way. All right. We're going to go ahead and get our Loctite. Just want to kind of test fit here. So we'll go ahead and put our drag link in the front here. Yep, perfect, perfect, perfect. If you're curious, this screw here, what did we grab? Did we grab a M2 by 8. Yeah, it's an M2 by 8. Seems like it'll be the perfect length. Actually, I'm going to put it through the drag link ball first and then we'll put some Loctite on the end. And then we'll go ahead and screw it in. All right, nice and snug. Now we're not centered obviously, I just was test fitting that real quick. But now that we're on here, we'll be able to go ahead and put it on their center. Now I want to talk about the two different holes in the servo horns. Many servo horns have different holes, and it's not just to adjust the, you know, how you're mounting. It's not like a distance, it's not just a, a fitment of your drag link to your actual steering link if you need to move it up or down for space. It actually changes the amount of throw and the amount of torque that you have. The closer your drag link is mounted to the center of the servo horn, right, you know, at the top of the servo horn, the further up it's mounted, the more torque you're going to have. It'll, it'll provide to be much stronger, you know, even though this has specific torque numbers, those are measured at a certain distance from the actual gear itself. Uh, I think it varies per manufacturer, which is why the torque numbers aren't always the same, but, or, you know, accurate, depending on how you measure it. But basically dropping your drag link here down to the furthest point is going to get you the most throw, right? Because it's going to push it the farthest, uh, but you're going to have the least amount of torque. Moving it up is going to get you more torque, but less, you know, steering angle. We're going to go ahead and put it at the bottom. These guys are already kind of shorties because, you know, you want to maximize your torque. And we've got plenty of clearance here. So let me go ahead and make sure we're straight. It's as straight as possible. We'll drop the servo horn on. Right about there. A little off. Let's go one more. There. There we go. That's pretty close. And then we're going to trim it in the rest of the way. All right. We'll go ahead and lock tight this guy up. I do love that the servo horn screw 3Flow9 provides is a hex head. A lot of manufacturers give you a Phillips head, and I absolutely hate that. So I'll go ahead and snug this guy down, get it nice and tight. You don't have to over tighten because, well, you're going to be using lock tight, going metal into metal. And there we go. Beautiful. Plenty of speed, plenty of torque. Yeah, buddy. We're not even running at the full 8.4, obviously. We're just running off a of stock ESC here, so it's probably 6 volts. Not even sure. Maybe a little less. 5 volt? Oof. Oof. So we're not going to get full performance out of this until we switch this guy over to uh, a different ESC that can actually go up to the 8.4. And then we'll have a lot more torque, a lot more speed. 
Um, and we'll show that when we go ahead and upgrade this guy. We will be putting a FearTech starter system in, which is basically the Venom with Lizard Pro. And that Lizard Pro, we can definitely increase our voltage. So we will show that. Our trim nice and centered now. Ideally, we'd want to set endpoints. So just be aware when you're using the stock remote. Uh, if you turn all the way, you know, you can break stuff or bind up your CVDs if, with these stronger servos. So just be aware. With stronger servos, you should be setting endpoints, but with a stock remote, you can't do that. But you can adjust your dual rate here on the stock remote, and it's basically the same thing. If you turn your wheel, you can kind of see, you can reduce the amount of throw you have just a little bit. That way you're not basically putting stress on your servo as you turn it, moving your servo tray, right? If we go all the way back and max out our dual rate, you can kind of see issues there. You can even see our servo kind of moves when we push it all the way, see that? That's our servo mount. That's the mount, that's just the stock mount. Definitely would be uh, advantageous to get an aftermarket aluminum mount, um, something that helps with your link situation here as well. But we're working with what we've got right now. So we're gonna go there. And also a lot of people don't have that stuff yet. They just wanna upgrade their servo. So this is what you're gonna end up with when you do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of wrap this. I do like a little twisty thing. I don't know if you saw it on this servo. Kind of twist it around, clean it up. It's pretty easy to do. Just grab like a long driver. Let's get our smaller diameter. Here we go. Oh, it's the same either way. Go ahead and unplug this guy, turn it off, unplug. We'll go ahead and unplug this guy. You know, we're gonna be coming straight out the back here and then we'll start curling it right about here. We don't want it to be rubbing with the, the curling we've got going on. So you don't wanna do it too close to the servo because then it'll rub in here. I used to have a better driver that was like a really thin, long driver that worked perfect for this, but I don't even know where it went. It's like an old school yellow hex, yellow handled hex driver. You know what? Is there enough on our LIP for this? Yeah, there we go. Okay, get it nice and snug there, and then we'll hit it with a little bit of heat. Not a lot, just a little. And I'll warm up that, that wire sheathing. That just gets a little, little cleaner there for us. I am excited. Oh, I forgot to show you guys this. Boom, this is for the, the horn. Um, to show any of the weights, 303 stainless steel, 25T, 19 millimeters long. The center screw is an M2.5. The drag link screws are M2, or a servo. Okay. All right, we're done. All set up, all good to go. We're gonna go run this guy. Again, the huge bonus here, the huge benefit to this servo is that the wire comes out the back, right? So you can tuck it right through here, goes right through where your motor kind of sits um, versus any other servo is gonna come literally into your shock and into your chassis rail here. It's gonna literally come out right here. And a lot of them have like big rubber grommets on them. So you would 100% you have to cut off the rubber grommet. Um, otherwise you're gonna be hitting on your shocks pretty bad. So th this is just perfect in that regard. Absolutely perfect. Any other servo you put in here, uh, unless you get a shorty servo, or a really flat servo, which means you're gonna be losing a ton of torque and speed. Uh, but any of the standard servos that people usually put in from the other manufacturers where we, we like our hard, high torque servos, you're gonna to have to do the same stuff. You're gonna have a little bit of rubbing here on your links. Uh, so maybe change your servo tray. And you're gonna have, depending on how low you get, right? How you put your shocks and stuff, you're gonna to have to trim your servo tray ears, regardless, which we did with the stock, and then trim down the top ear of your servo. But that's gonna be, again, with any servo. So. This guy is, is perfect though. It's hard to deal with this wire coming out the side with those other servos. You can trim this and you can trim this and you can shim that, but getting that, dealing with this wire coming out, like you have to move your shocks or I don't know, there's a lot of work you gotta do to try to make that wire not rub. You might have to open up the servo and pull the grommet out and do a bunch of work on that, trying to move it so that it's more flush and not hitting on things. But 3409 just gives you the perfect opportunity and option here of just straight out the back. Perfect. I'm loving it. I'm loving it.
Also, in our video about this truck, if you if you have a Red Cat and you haven't seen our deep dive review, definitely check that out over here. We go through and show a bunch of tips on how to tighten up your body and just little things in this truck, in addition to just a full-blown review where we deep dive and open everything up. We show everything inside. We open up the axles, all that good stuff. But there's a ton of good information in that video uh, for this truck and uh, definitely worth checking out. All right, I think we are ready. We're going to go tonight and run it a little bit, and uh, we will show you what it's about. Let's go. I hope you enjoyed the video of this little guy. This servo is badass to say the least. Uh, I just love how it fits. I love how there's not a bunch of rubbing uh, from the wire. I love that it's got good torque and speed. And that's even with just the stock five bolts, like crazy. And um, yeah, when we put our uh, upgrade system in here for our ESC, it's definitely gonna change it even more, which is gonna be awesome. We'll see if the Red Cat axles can handle the power. Hopefully we don't break any CVDs or uh, C hubs or steering knuckles where our links uh, attach. But uh, yeah, overall, super happy with it. Definitely check out 3Flow9. They've got roller bearing links, hopefully coming for these guys, and a bunch of other upgrades that are going to be coming for the Red Cat. So definitely stay tuned to their page. We'll also share that information as we get it on our Facebook page. So check out the Shop Mini RC Facebook page. We like to post new stuff on there. Just when new products come out, we'll just you know, share the, share the posts from the manufacturer. So we'll definitely be sharing information on that. And, um, yeah, just tons of cool stuff. So we can't wait to get our hands on a roller bearing steering link. We'll probably drop on here at some point. Um, and whatever else they may have, I think they got some, some diff collars coming to help kind of reduce the uh, amount of snag that you might have on the back of your diff where your drive shaft goes in, uh, just to kind of smooth that transition plus some other stuff. I think they have maybe rear link riser coming. I don't know. Check out their site. We got a link down in the description below. When you place your order, tell them the shop many RC sent you and, uh, yeah, let them know you, uh, you heard about them through us if you did. And um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Until next time, get out there and build something awesome. Build a car, build a course, build a community. Smash it, crash it, bash it. Don't break the expensive parts. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, share, notification bell. All those things, guys. If you enjoyed the video, definitely share it. It helps us out a ton with the algorithms. Put down in the comments, Flow Gnome, if you watch the whole video, guys. Flow Gnome. We'll see you next time. Take care.